Hey, good morning and welcome to Mountain Movers Online. We are so glad you're joining us. My name is Pastor Josh, this is Pastor Jana, and we serve as the online campus pastors here at Mountain Movers Church. Hey, and while you're at it, give a shout out to our online host, Delaney. She's gonna be co communicating with you online throughout the service. Yes, and midweeks are going incredible. Yes. Every group is just having so much fun connecting and learning, and uh, not just on campus, but online too. Yes. So uh, if you are not signed up, it is not too late. So be sure to um, you know jump on the app and, and sign up. If you need help with that, let us know, yep. and uh, we will get you signed up. Yes, you know what I want to know? I want to know where people are joining us from this morning. So uh, let us know in the chat where you're joining us from and who you're, who you're watching with. Man, we, you are part of us and we're part of you. We are one family at MMC. Yes, and don't forget that app to check in. Send us your prayer requests. Let us know your praise reports. Yes. We want to do life together. Absolutely. Hey, we have a conference coming up that we're going to as a church. And if you want to go, you can still sign up. It's called the Tipping, Tipping Point Conference. It's an end times prophecy conference. And we believe at Mount Moose Church that the Lord could come back at any moment. And, and we, we could be with him at any time. And this, this conference is all about, you know, finding out, more about what that end times looks like. What's that? What? How close are we? And um, I believe it's very close. And so September the 17th, that's a Saturday. That's when that is. And so you can sign up on the app or on our website, mountmoverschurch.org. Mm -hmm. Yes. And don't forget to like, love, and share this experience. It is the easiest way to make Jesus famous. Yes, absolutely. Share, share, share. Mm -hmm. It's so good. Hey, um, if you haven't joined our online Facebook campus, campus group, be sure you do that. Um, we'll drop a link in the chat. But hey, that's a great way that you can stay connected with Mount Movers Church all week long. And we want you to be a part of it. Yes, I love doing those devotions together yes. and just seeing what God is dropping in everyone else's heart too. Yeah. And so I can't wait to see what devotion we're yeah. going to do this week. Yeah, hey, and while you're at it, you can, if you're in you version, you can actually actually set Mount Movers Church as your church now, and you can see what devotion we're going through as a church. And so be sure you go do that today. Yes. Yep. And uh, today's part two of At the Table. Last week was so good, so, so good and yeah. finding where, where we're at in that progress yep. uh, process. And, and I can't wait to see, uh, you know, what they're going to talk about today. So wherever you are, get ready for the yep. experience, get ready for worship and yep. join us. Grab a coffee. We can't wait to see you online.
Well, who's ready to go after God this morning? As the deer longs for the water, so my soul longs for Him. Put your hands together. I give you glory for all you've brought me through. And now I'm ready for whatever you want to do. I'm moving forward to follow after you. And now I'm ready for whatever you want. I'm ready for whatever you want to do. Oh, your presence is an open door. We want you, Lord, like never before. Oh, your presence is an open door. this place this morning. God, we thank you that you bring the breakthrough. God, that when we hold on to your promises, God, though it may take some time, Jesus, your time is not our time, God. Lord, we see the breakthrough. God, this morning as we come into your presence, God, we just ask Jesus, God, for all distractions to be removed. God, for all walls, God, to be removed. God, any barrier between us and you. This morning, 
I want to just encourage you. Would you just clear your mind of everything that's gone on this last week? The things that you still have to take care of this coming week? Could you just take a moment to just completely focus upon Jesus? Completely allow your mind to be only focused on the Father and what God wants to do here in this place this morning. God, we reach out to you, Jesus. I feel something changing in this room. Things of the past have become new. So come with an open heart. Believe it in a one he's going to do. Jesus, come and wake our faith and break through every doubt. As we sing glory, as the walls come crashing down. Good boy! 
Come on, will you just lift your hands across this room? Begin to just focus on the Father this morning. God, come and fill our hearts, Jesus.
morning. God, with our arms lifted wide. God, and we say, here we are. God, we're available. Use us, Jesus. I pray that that's your prayer this morning. As you come into God's house, that you would be sensitive to his voice. That you would be open when he speaks. When he brings direction, that our quick answer would be, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. God, we want to hear you speak this morning. We want to hear your voice. God, wrap your arms around us, Jesus. God, I pray that our minds would be open. God, that our hearts would be open and ready to receive. God, as your word goes forth, God, maybe be putty in your hands, God, allowing you to mold and shape us, Jesus, into your image. God, we're here and we're available. Come and do whatever you want to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. You may be seated this morning. You know, God wants us to be available. He wants us to be available so that he can use us and do things we can't even imagine. And that includes the area of of our finances. You know, one of the worst lies that we can listen to of the enemy is, I'll give when I have money, or I'll give more when I have more money. But you see, God's ready to bless us now. If we'll just make ourselves available then we'll move into what I read about. It's called the blessing zone. You know, it's football season and only good things happen in the end zone. And I want to be in God's zone where he can bless me. And you know, what's awesome is that whenever we decide to just go ahead and make ourselves available and give, we're going to go from financial stress to financial peace in God's blessing zone. This morning, I want to share a second Corinthians with you. It says, but this I say, He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, just be available. For God loves a cheerful giver. So this morning, I just want to ask you, are you going to join me? Let's just give and end up in that blessing zone that God can bless us. This morning, you can give in three easy ways. You can text MMC to 77977. You can give cash or check in person as you leave in the give back boxes by the doors, or you can go online to mountmoverschurch.org. Also this morning, we would like for you to pull out your phones and check in with us because we are family here and we want to know how we can celebrate with you this week and how we can also pray for you this week. Let's pray this morning. Lord Jesus, we just love you and thank you for who you are. God, that you're ready and willing to bless us And God, I just ask you again that you would open our hearts and minds with this message this morning. And Lord, you would pour out your blessings on each and every individual. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I said, even though in the natural, from what we can see, there's little signs of hope in this culture. But with God, there's always hope. As for what's happening in our culture, didn't the word of God say was going to happen? There is nothing to fear. If you are here in this hour, God chose you to be here in this hour. The rapture is Jesus coming from his Father's house in heaven to the earth to receive us to himself so he can take us back to the Father's house and marry us there. That's what we're waiting for. This is the next big event that's about to happen. And all the mayhem and everything that's happening in the world right now is exactly what the Bible said would happen right before the rapture. God is playing the final chord. We're listening to the last notes. Now is the time to believe in Jesus Christ. Don't stop living your life. Plan like Jesus isn't coming back for a hundred years, but live like he's coming back today. I love it. Well, if you haven't noticed, we are living in the end times. It's not a matter of waiting for the end times to arrive. If you understand the basic uh, Bible truths of prophecy, you can see that that these time we've been in these times since 1948 when Israel was established as a nation, and we've been in the last days, and we are now at the end of the end of days. 
And we are just at the threshold of seeing what Revelation talks about as the seven years of tribulation. We are right on the threshold of seeing that happen. But we believe that Jesus is going to return just like he said he would. We believe that one day, very, very, very soon, say soon. One day soon, we believe that in the same way that he ascended when he left, and there was more than 500 witnesses the day that he ascended, it's documented in history, many, many, many people saw him ascend into the clouds in the same way he's going to return. There will be a day very, very soon when the clouds will part, and those who are dead or asleep in Christ will be caught up with him in the air, and those of us who are alive and remain will join him. My question for you is, are you ready? Are you ready? Is your life in a position of readiness to receive the Lord when he comes back? But even more than that, are you doing what you can only do to position your friends and your family and your loved ones to be ready when Jesus returns? Because nobody, if they knew what was coming after the believers disappear, if they knew what was coming, they would not want to be here because it is literally going to be hell on earth. Read about it in the book of Daniel. Read about it in Revelation. Ezekiel, the list goes on and on and on. You can see it in the news each and every day. Watch Russia. Watch Israel. We are in the times. The battle of Gog and Magog is happening right before our very eyes as Iran builds nuclear weapons and they are just this close. I want to tell you, it's happening. If any part of what I just said interests you in any way. You need to join us. You need to go down to Dallas with us for one day, September 17th at the Tipping Point Prophecy Conference. It's going to be an incredible day of really the world's best leaders and speakers when it comes to teaching end time prophecy. You might say, why would I want to do that? Because you need to know not only the times, you need to know how to position yourself, your family, your friends, and how to use the, the, um, the resources that God has given us in the day that we're living in to help other people know the days that we're living in and help them come to Christ so they can be ready when Jesus returns. So I hope that you'll do that. You can go to our website or you can go on the Mount Movers Church app and we're going to stay in a hotel right around the corner from Fellowship Church. We're going to have a great time that day. We're going to do a road trip. We're going to make some memories. We're going to have a blast. Cannot wait to hear about the memories that are made when we go. Absolutely. We'd love for you to join us. Well, last week we started a new series called At the Table. How many of you guys enjoy having dinner around the table? Yeah, you know what? It's kind of a lost art. Unfortunately, um, over the years, I don't know at what point it transitioned because growing up, we almost always had dinner around the table. But somewhere in the last few years, we've kind of transitioned from away from the table where the table ends up kind of cluttered sometimes. And we generally sit in front of televisions or on iPhones and we, we scarf our food. But you know, around the table was meant to be a conversation. Around the table was meant to be a way to build relationship. It was a way to not only nourish our body with the food that was going in, but also to build and cultivate relationship. Well, last week we talked talked about how the table is an illustration of the church. And at the table, every single week when you show up here at church or you join us online as part of our online family, you are coming to be nourished by the food. Jesus said in John chapter 6 verse 35, I am the bread of life. How many love carbs? I know, right? And then you've got all those that On are gluten-free. And we're like, we just can't they have them. They don't count. Blake has a shirt and it says, these, it's Sunday, <laughs> Sunday these are Jesus carbs, <laughs> right? But Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. I'm those good carbs. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. What he was saying is you don't need to desire anything past me. You see, there is a void in our life before Christ. There's this hole, if you will, a Jesus-shaped hole in our heart that we search for everything that brings about pleasure in this life until we come to realize that what's missing is Jesus. And when we enter into that relationship with him, we are never searching again for that fulfillment because he says, I will make you full. You'll never hunger. You'll never thirst again. So every week when you come to the house of God, we as the pastors, we're like the chefs, okay? 
We cook up you a meal from the word of God and we deliver it to you in style. Every single week, it's our responsibility as the pastors of this house to feed you and nourish your spirit so that you will grow. Can you say grow? Grow. Grow. That's what it's all about. That's why we come into the house of God. That's why we invite our friends to come to the house of God. You see, at this table, there are these three chairs. And last week we talked about it. Today we're going to go a little deeper. But chair one is that person who has yet to have a relationship with Jesus. We would consider them far from God. Maybe they know about God. Maybe they've heard about God. But they don't have an actual relationship. It would be kind of like going to dinner with somebody you don't know. You ever go out on a blind date? I never did that either. That is so weird. But if you did, it's like sitting down at the table with someone you don't have a relationship with is a little awkward, right? And so chair one people might feel a little awkward when you first come to the house of God. But you know what? Here at MMC, we're all about helping you feel like family, no matter what chair you're sitting in. We don't want you to feel awkward. We want you to feel free to come into our house and to be able to experience the goodness of God without those reservations. I would say to you, this could also be a person who many, many years ago, maybe you prayed a prayer in your heart. Maybe you were at a a, a powerful service where you, where you experienced the presence of God. You felt his conviction. You prayed a prayer. Maybe even you were baptized. And then after that point, as so oftentimes it happens, you just get hammered by the enemy. You fall off the wagon and you, and you, you discontinue, you know, following that path of living for God. And, and really you just go back to the old life and, and you, there's no relationship with Jesus. There's no fruit in that relationship. Jesus said that you will know that they're my disciples, my believers by the fruit on their tree. So there might be many of you that you maybe prayed a prayer or made a decision, but you never made Jesus the Lord of your life. And there's a really, really big difference. We're talking about the difference between religion and relationship. Relationships where it's at. Brad, when you were growing up, were you in church? Yep. Off and on throughout your life, right? But how old were you when you actually probably moved from chair one to chair two. I'm glad you asked. So when I was 12, I was at this incredible crusade, felt the presence of God in a real way. I was crying, bawling my eyes out, made that decision. But then from 12 until 20, just was not living for God. So you didn't have a relationship. Did not so you have had a relationship a knowledge with God, of God because I went back with the same old friends. You know, in order for things to change, you have to change. Yeah. You have to change the way you think, the way you act, the yeah. way you live, the people you associate with. I didn't change those things. Right. So it wasn't until I was 20 when there was that real fruit bearing transformation yeah. in my life where I changed the way that I thought, changed the way I talked, changed the people I associated with. And I started living it instead of just thinking that I had it. So chair one is that person who's yet to have that surrendered life, that relationship. We're going to talk about that a little bit more. But then you've got that person who moves into chair two. And that is the person who has now surrendered their life to Jesus. And they are in that high chair. Okay. This is a baby believer. This is one who is not mature yet. One who doesn't know it all yet. One who is in the process of learning how to live for Jesus. How many know that a baby in a high chair is messy? It's messy, messy right? It is, it is messy, but yet it's exciting. We're going to talk about that after a while. And then you've got chair three. And chair three is those mature believers, those fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ. Those people who are connecting weekly in the house of God. They're daily in the word of God and they're growing. They're giving back generously. They're serving selflessly. They're sharing contagiously. They are fully devoted, all in followers followers of Jesus. Well, the house of God should have all three representation in the church. All three chairs should be in the church equally. We're going to talk about that a little bit deeper here in just a few minutes. We should say a healthy church will see all of these chairs very visibly, and there should be an equal balance of all three if the church is really healthy, operating the way that Christ intended, really doing its job. And I just want to tell you, Mount Movers Church is a healthy, healthy church. 
Why do we know this? Because this church is growing like crazy. Just look around. Now, some of you might say, well, churches can grow just because of smoke and lights and shallow preaching and good music. We see it a lot. Unfortunately, we see it in the church a lot. But this church is growing because they are drawn by the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. And when they are brought into this house, they're hearing the unapologetic word of truth. They're hearing pastors that when they serve up the meal, they're not shying away from hitting the hard things head on. We talk about sin. Sin is offensive. Nobody likes to talk about sin because it deals with our junk. We don't like that. But the reality is we talk about it here. We get real and raw and they keep coming back. I'm like, why are you coming back? We're beating you up. (laughs) We're talking about stuff we don't want to hear about. We don't want to mess with our junk, but you keep coming back. It's because to the glory of yeah. Jesus Christ. He Amen. is saving people for yes. real. It's Amen. genuine. Their lives yes. are being changed. And when you taste and see that the Lord is yes. good, you can't get enough of it. Right. And you got to keep coming back and get more and more right. and more of it. Amen. So we are so blessed as a church to yeah. see that the way that God intended this system to work, it's working. It's working. And the more as a church we can, all of us can really oil this machine and make it operate the way that it's intended, man, we're going to fill heaven. Yes. I'm just telling you right now, we're going to win more and more and more people for That's the right. glory of God. And uh, you're going to hear more people than ever singing the bridge to one of my new favorite songs. I mean, you guys know the, the, the song I'm talking about. Hell lost another one. I am free. It's coming. I am free. You're going to you hear it if you don't know it. I thank God, Maverick City. <laughs> That's an awesome song, and I love the bridge because I'm like, heck yeah, hell, lost another one. Woo! I love. That's why we live. I love getting back at the devil because he brought hell into my right. life, and I love rescuing people yes, from hell. Yes. It says, nope, you can't have them. Right, we're snatching yes. them up, yes. and we're going to get them Amen. into heaven. We're going to fill heaven. Yes. We're going to make it full. Amen. And it's working. It's been working. It's going to continue to work because we are, we have the right mindset of the way God intended church to be done. The problem is the more we do this, the more the room gets full. (laughs) But that's not too big of a problem because we have a solution. September 25th, we are going to three life-changing services here at Mountain River Church. That's right. If you look around. So exciting. If you look around this morning, just do it. Turn around. If you're in the front, turn around. Turn around. We don't really, there's Grant back there waving at you like a psycho. You know what? (laughs) Where's he at? We (laughs) have to make more room for more people because here's the fact. As you move from chair to chair, as you give your life to Jesus, you become this baby believer. You begin to grow and you become a fully devoted follower of Jesus who begins to share their story. You begin to realize that all of life is about helping somebody else who doesn't know Jesus to come to Christ. So you start inviting them to come into the house of God because you know that when they get here, the power and presence of Almighty God is going to meet them right here on this campus. And when they get in God's presence, presence. Everything changes. Everything changes when you get in God's presence. So we are stoked. We've been keeping a secret for just a little while, but now the secret is out. So I want to tell you that starting tomorrow morning, you'll see it all over social media. You'll see videos going out. We're going to three. We're going to three. You'll see invites out there next week. All of the ushers will be handing them out, the worship host. You'll be getting all kinds of information to invite your friends because because guess what? We're going to open up another 350 seats so that you can invite your friends to come into the house of God and have their lives forever changed. That is exciting. It's exciting. It is the very reason that we came to Grove, Oklahoma. It is the reason that God planted us in the buffalo pasture and said, you know what? Nobody will believe this. Nobody will believe this. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to drop you in the middle of nowhere next to the buffalo, and I'm going to be glorified. God gets all the glory here. Will you give God a hand of praise? And as she moves on... As she moves on into today's message, I want to just reiterate why this is happening. It's, it's because of this process, like Misty said. It's, it's because the system works. It's the way Jesus intended. You and I are inviting people that we know, that we love, that we don't know. We're inviting them from that the we street. Don't love. 
He has people we don't <laughs> love. Because they need Jesus. That's why we don't love Jesus them. Because they need Jesus. Enemies. We're inviting them from the street to the seat. That's right. And once yes. they get in here and they experience the goodness of God and his yeah. presence, then we move them to chair two. Now they're babies. <laughs> <laughs> and they're dirty and smelly and stinky. And we disciple them. And we teach them to grow big and strong yes. and get Come to on. work doing the work of ministry. And we get them into chair three. And then you know what happens? The chair threes yeah. go and get people from the street to the seat. And the cycle starts yes. all over again. Yes. That's why this is happening. Because you're doing what Jesus said to do. Yes. He said, go and make disciples of every nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And I will be with you always, even until the end of the age. That's what's happening. So go you. Go Mountain Movers Church. Way to go. We're making heaven full. That's so awesome. Well, today in part two, we're going to be talking about how we move chairs and a message called from the milk to the meat, from the milk to the meat. So we're going to focus today on chair two. Last week we were focused on chair one, but this day we're talking about this baby believer. The Bible says in John one verses 12 through 13, it says this, but to all who believed in him and accepted him, notice they believed and they accepted him. He gave the right to become the children of God. They are reborn. Say reborn. They're reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. When you make a decision to surrender your life to Christ, you are now reborn. In the spiritual sense, you become a child of God. You become a child adopted into the family of God. And we all know that when a baby is born, immediately after a baby is born, we start seeing growth. How many of you guys have a baby in our nursery? Raise your hands. We have the most beautiful babies. Yes, we do. Seriously, Seriously. in all the planet. (laughs) Like I'm not having any more kids, but I go love on yours all the time. I love seeing the beautiful babies. We throw up some of our beautiful babies. Look at these guys. This is only like a tiny portion. She told you. And they're so stinking cute. Adorable. I don't know if they're this cute at your house, but you do a good job when you bring them here on Sundays. They're so they adorable. Look good. But you know, all of these babies, <laughs> from the time that they are born, there's this process of development where they start to grow. And we all know the process. They start on the milk. We don't bring them to the table, put a fork in their hand and drop a steak in front of that infant. We don't do that. We would never do that. That is stupid. What we do is we give them the milk. We feed them. We then nurture them, right? We give them everything that they need. And guess what they do? Every time they need something, what do they do? They cry. And you go, oh, 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 what do you need, Right? And it's cute when they're little. It's cute when they're little. It's not so cute when they get big. It's not so cute to see an adult sitting in a high chair whining because really what the high chair is, honestly, is the eye chair. It's the place where it's more selfish, self-centered. And babies don't mean to be, they're not trying to be rude. They're not trying to be selfish. They can't make it without you. They don't know any better. They don't know any better. They're, it's impossible. But as parents, we all know that every day you feed them, you nurture them, you teach them. Guess what? Jesus said in the Great Commission that we were to go and then we were to do what? Teach them to observe everything I commanded, commanded. and I will be with you always. Teach them. The fact is, it is our job to teach them, to train them, to nurture them. And guess what? If they don't grow, we get very concerned. Would you agree? I had a friend years and years ago and they had the cutest little girl and that little baby grew normal and natural till about three. And at three, she didn't grow for the next two years. And at first it was like, you know, parents were becoming a little concerned. Then it becomes serious, serious concern. From going to the family doctor, to specialist after specialist after specialist, to begin to try to figure out why is this baby not growing? You see, the fact is, in the spiritual realm, it's the same thing. Once you surrender your life to Jesus and you come and you sit in this high chair, what should be happening 
is every week you should be taking in nourishment every day, just little bits at a time. You see, when you first give your life to Christ, we're not going to jump into Revelation and expect you to understand all the deep things of God. You're going to take little bits at a time and you're going to start to grow and start to grow and start to grow. But the problem is there's a lot of people in the church, not in this church per se, but in the church as a whole, that we stop right here. We say yes to Jesus. We raise our hand for a prayer. We say yes to Jesus. We come sit right here and we expect to be spoon fed the rest of our life. And then all of a sudden we start realizing that we don't really like everything and we start whining and we think that church is all about us and the kingdom of God is all about us. And God, I'm so mad at you because I'm praying to you and you're not answering me the way I want you to answer me because it's all about me. Wow. The eye chain. Right? Think about it. Babies are self-centered, not because they're trying to be rude. They don't know any better. They're developing, they're growing. But there comes a point where that baby physically is big enough that they need to come out of the high chair and they need to go sit at the regular seat at the table. And you take you teach them to take a fork in one hand and a knife in the other. And you put a steak in front of them and you teach them how to cut it up and how to eat it, and how to be nourished by it. And then you go broke because they fall in love with steak and they want it all the time. Should have never started them on steak. Oh my word, (laughs) my children, I swear. I had one of my boys and he got into the gym in high school and he started lifting weights big time. And he was watching all these YouTube videos and he came to me and he was like, mom, Arnold you ate steak got, every night. <laughs> you got to change what you're buying. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He said, chicken's not going to do it and deer's not going to do it. I have to have steak every single day. That is what I've been watching and I need that nourishment, okay? I need lean cut steak every day. Right, and I'm you like, need is a job. you need, you need <laughs> to start buying need. the groceries, my son, because you're not eating steak every day at my house. He was so mad. Sorry. He was oh, dead he was, serious. Yeah. He said, you, you buy all kinds of stuff that's healthy for you and for blood for me, blah, blah, blah. He was like, you got to buy me steak every day. You are the breaks to my physical goals. <laughs> Dude, tell me another sob story. Get a job. Buy your own steak, sucker. It's not the happening. The fact is, <laughs> but it's natural that we should be growing. And as parents, we teach them how to take the next step. Here's what Peter says. First Peter Chapter two, verse two, he says, like newborn babies, you must crave milk, spiritual milk, so that you will grow. Say grow. We should crave it. How many of you guys know in the middle of the night that baby cries out? They want that milk. And you're like, I just want to sleep. And they're like crying because they crave it. They want it. They need it. That's what Peter is saying. We should crave that spiritual milk so that we will grow into a full experience of salvation. Notice it. Full experience. Full experience. Not staying in the high chair. Not staying in the eye chair. But growing into a full experience. A fully devoted follower of Jesus Christ. We should constantly be moving seats. So there's three things that we want to share with you today that are going to help you, if you are that newborn believer, that are going to help you from moving from chair two to chair three. Or maybe you have been at it for a while and you've just been in the high chair a little too long. It's time for us to help nudge you and get you from chair two to chair three. The first thing is, number one, be alert. Say be alert. Because Satan will try to take you out as quick as he possibly can. I want you to look at 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 through 9. If you're taking notes, 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 through 9. And here's, uh, here's Peter's instruction to us. Stay alert. Watch out for the great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and listen, be strong. Say, be strong. Be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world are going through similar things. So the question is, how are we supposed to be strong? If you're an infant in a high chair, how are you supposed to do this? Let me, let me, sh- let me share this first. There's never going to be a more opportune time 
for the enemy to take you out than when you're in the high chair. And he knows that. He knows that, and maybe you've experienced this yourself, or maybe you know somebody this has happened to. You know, you give your life to Christ, you're excited, emotions are high, but then life happens. And you go back to the same, you know, funky break room with the foul, you know, talk. And, and you, you, you go back to the same, you know, uh, uh, places on social media. And you got still connected to the same friends that probably shouldn't be your friends. And, and you, you, you experience these encounters that draw you, immediately draw you into temptation. And you feel the weightiness, the heaviness, the attack. I'm not... Over the last 20 some odd years, I can't tell you how many times Misty and I have noticed new believers, brand new babes in Christ. And they're like, man, nobody told me like I was going to just get, like everything's going wrong. Why is everything going wrong? I thought when I'm living for Jesus, everything's going to go right. Wait a minute. For, who told you that? <laughs> First of all, who told you that? Nobody ever said everything was going to go right. right. Jesus said in this life, there will be trials. There yeah. will be tribulation of all sorts. James said there's going to be all sorts of various temptations, but you need to learn to be strong and resist the enemy and he will flee. So the enemy, when you give your life to Jesus, I'm just telling you right now, you can expect all of hell to to break loose and to come down on you. Why? Well, I think one of the most spiritual illustrations we can use is that of the Lion King. How many of you guys have seen the Lion King? I used to like Disney before they went woke. Um, yeah, and so I remember back in the 90s watching, watching the Lion King. And I remember that part, you know, where Scar, Uncle Scar, takes out Mufasa. I cried, all right? I cried took out Mufasa, and then what does he do with Simba? But he runs him off and he convinces him to never return to the pride again. Why? Because he was trying to secure for himself this mighty dynasty. He was trying to destroy the previous dynasty and, and create for himself a new throne that he wanted to sit on as king of the tribe. That's what Scar wanted to do. And you know, the enemy Satan he, he, he rolls exactly the same way. Yeah. Exactly the, you know, uh, before Satan was Satan, he was Lucifer. He was an angel in heaven and he wanted to be God. And God said, sorry, that's not going to happen. So he cursed him and cast him down from heaven to earth. And now he's this unemployed cherub. He's an angel that has no job, but he's made himself a job of trying to destroy the, 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 the dynasty that God has created for the sons and the daughters of God. You see, we as believers sitting in this high chair, as soon as you say yes to Jesus and you're sitting in this high chair, here's what happens. There, there's something that takes place as you become reborn. You become, as Misty said, adopted and you are grafted into the family of God and you become a joint heir with who? Jesus. Jesus. Who is Jesus. He's the son of God. He's right. also the king of kings and Lord of lords. And you right. become yes. a joint heir in the kingdom yes. of God. Jesus yes. told his disciples, I go now to prepare a place for you. Yeah. Did you know for all believers, God is literally, his angels are building mansions in this luxurious yeah. heaven that we can't even describe. Yeah. This place, this place, he's adding on to his yeah. father's house, preparing a place for you. Why? Because we are literally heaven's royalty. We are literally adopted sons and daughters of God and brothers and sisters of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That's right. And because of that, Satan hates you. Yes. He hates God's promises for your life. He hates God's plans for your life. And he's yeah. going to do everything he can while you're sitting in this high chair, while you are a vulnerable, innocent little baby, he's going to do everything he can to take you out. Look at John 10 and 10. It says the thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. My purpose, this is Jesus talking, is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Again, there's never a time that you're going to feel more attacked and more tempted than when you are sitting in that high chair. So it's really important then that you do what you need to do to get strong fast. Yes. You guys ever watch, you know, like wildlife channels and you see these little, the little ones, how do they survive? How do they make it? Well, in many cases, they stay close to the pack. Yep. There's power in numbers. Yes, they stay man. protected. That's right. One thing that you're going to need to learn really fast if you're one of these chair two believers is, is there's protection in the pack. Yes. You're going to need to understand you got to get connected 
You got to get connected. You got to get connected. You got to get connected. You need to have, you need to link up with God fearing people in the body of Christ where you are encouraging and strengthening one another because the church, the way it's designed, the way it's supposed to be is we're supposed to have each other's back. Because I promise you there's going to be a moment where you're weak, where you're stumbling, when you're struggling, and you're going to need some help. That's what being connected is all about. There's a couple different ways you connect, all right? A couple different ways. One great quick way is to join the serve team. All right. You may not have seen that one coming, but I'm going to tell you when, when you yeah. join a serve team, what the serve team, what's happening is you're getting into a, a small team of people, a tribe of people that are serving in the same area yeah. week in and week out. And guess what happens when you don't, uh, when you don't show up when you're supposed to be scheduled, your team's reaching out to you. Hey dude, That's what's, right. what is up? Where what is at? going on? Where are you at? We miss you. That's we right. love you. Do we need to pray for you? What's going on? So right. there's accountability there. There's encouragement yes. there. There's relationship there. The other way, of course, is life groups. We preach it all the time, but we can't over uh, preach it enough. And that right. is, man, we got to get connected. And, and, and we sit in, 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 in seats right now in these right. rows, but on Wednesday nights, we sit in circles. Yes. You can do that in-house and online, but whatever you do, You need to make sure that you get connected. Want to make sure that you get from chair two to chair three as quick as you possibly can so that you can, as Peter said, be strong in your faith. Don't isolate yourself because isolation leads to annihilation. You know, I think one of the things that I hear people say quite often is like, well, I don't really know anybody. And somehow we think in our mind like, well, we don't really want to serve, you know, because we don't know anybody. Like maybe if I, if I come to church long enough and I meet some people, listen to me, the fastest way to meet some people is to just jump on the app, put your own information in, and guess what? We contact you. We call you and we meet you. We hook you up with a team. Guess what? God has given every one of of us gifts and talents. And you say, no, 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 I'm not talented at anything. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. And it is our, it is our place as leaders in the church to identify what are the gifts? What do you love to do? What do you love to do? Because you can do it for Jesus. The fact is, is when you get to be a part of serving, then all of a sudden you start having this sense of fulfillment. Why? Because you realize that you play a part in this chair one person saying yes to Jesus. You play a part. You say, I just hold a door. You play a part. I just serve in the nursery rocking babies. You play a part. I serve coffee, Misty. You play a part. Every one of us play a part. Did you know that a newcomer, and we see between 26 to 36 every single Sunday morning, come into this house. Listen to me. They say, statistics say that you will make up your mind in the first seven minutes as to whether or not you will return to a church. Seven minutes. That means you don't get to hear the music. You don't get to hear the preaching. You only experience the parking team and the greeters and the nursery. Listen, all of those places are so vital. We play a part. Long before someone ever walks in this room, you play a part to getting them to feel like a part of the family. But here's what's interesting is a lot of churches go, we need you. No, God could do this whole thing on his own. He chose to use you and me because he wanted to, because he knew that we needed each other, that we would need to be connected. You see, we wouldn't take any one of those babies in the nursery and go sit them out on the sidewalk to fend for themselves, would we? You would have a fit and leave the church. If all the, I should do it as an illustration. Courtney, bring all the babies out. All Line the babies them up. Out. You would have a fit. But yet, we have people that get saved every week. And the enemy is ready to pick them off. And you know, the only way they get from here to here is if some chair three mature believers come alongside of them. And they say, listen to me. You got to get connected. Come on now. You got to be at church when the doors are open. We're going to spoon feed you, okay? We're going to make sure you get into the house of God. That is what it is for you in the high chair. We're going to help you come along, all right? So that first thing is you got to stay alert. You got to recognize that when you give your life to Jesus, the enemy wants to pick you off. And chair three believers, it is our responsibility to come alongside of him and know 
The enemy has a hit on their head. Do not go to sleep and put your head in the sand because you are all good with Jesus. You have a responsibility to help chair one and chair two. Give Jesus a hand right there. I'm on breathe. All right, number two. Number two is simply this, be patient. Be patient. You are not going to develop and mature overnight. It's just not going to happen. You know, for a person like myself, when I decide to do something, I'm all in. Like if I'm changing my diet, I'm changing everything overnight. I'm keto, I'm paleo, I'm whatever. I'll do it all, I'll change it all, bam. And when you become a believer, some of you have my personality and you're like, I wanna go from chair two to chair three immediately. And it just doesn't happen that way. It's a process. So you gotta be patient with yourself. Hebrews chapter five, verses 12 says this. You have been believers so long now that you ought to be teaching others. Instead, you need someone to teach you again the basic things about God's word. You are like babies who need milk and cannot eat solid food. For someone who lives on milk is still an infant and doesn't know how to do what is right. Verse 14, solid food is for those who are mature, who through training have to skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. Listen, the ultimate goal is that we go from the milk to the meat, but it's a process, a process. It doesn't happen overnight. You've got to be patient. But the third thing that you have to be, and this is really, really important and probably we see happening the least and why people don't move from chair two to chair three is you have to be consistent. You have to be consistent. You can't skip a meal. I mean, if you guys would allow your infant to just go a day without eating. Would any of us really do that? Say, you know, I just don't, I'm really busy today. Got a lot going on. And so I don't think I'm going to feed my baby today or tomorrow or the next day. Yet so many times chair two believers will make the huge mistake of going one day without being in the word of God and in the presence of God. It is more important that you eat spiritually than you eat physically. I would challenge you with this. Don't eat physical food until you have had spiritual food first. I I would just challenge you with that. Don't eat physical food until you've eaten spiritual food first. There was an incredible pastor many years ago. He said, um, he said, seek the face of God every morning, early morning. Seek the face of God before you see the face of man. Seek the face of God before you see the face of man. Listen, we, we've been pushing this for a long time and it's, 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 it seems very, very simple, but yet it's, it, it can be so hard to do if you don't discipline yourself to do it. You know, being a Christian, being a believer is all about discipline. Yeah. Believers should be the most disciplined people on the entire planet. We should lead by example. As we're following Christ, people should look at our lives and say, man, Christians are dedicated. They are disciplined. They are determined. That's what a disciple is. And so what we talk about a lot is the 15-minute challenge. We've been talking about it for years. And it's basically this. It is five minutes in a time of worship. I would encourage you just get on YouTube Pick your favorite worship song and just block everything out and just listen to the words, say the words, pray the words, and really just focus on that time between you and the Father. Most worship songs are about five minutes. So pick one worship song, worship God with all your heart, and when that song is over, move into a time of prayer. And that prayer can be very, very simple when you start. We have resources uh, that we can make available to you. Um, but basically you just want to spend time in God's presence. You want to tell him how much you love him. And then you want to just ask him to help you with your day and, and bless your family and bless your work. And, 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 and when you begin to do this and you begin to learn just to talk to God, then there's, there's a deeper dimension to prayer. But I want to encourage as a baby believer, you just want to get started learning how to talk to God, then learning how to be quiet and listen to God during that five minutes and then spend five minutes in your word. And I know for some of you, you 
five minutes. If you're in chair three, you're like, that's nothing. Trust me, I know. Because once you taste the bread and you're like, man, this is so stinking good. You can't get enough of the word of God. When you learn to truly study God's word, it is so addictive and so consuming. You're going to want to spend hours in the word of God because it's literally God's breath being breathed into your spirit. And when you read this, your whole life is going to come alive. Because God is God, the creator of the universe of heaven and earth is literally going to be speaking to your soul. The Holy Spirit will come alongside you, put his arm around your shoulder, and he will take you on a tour through his word. And he will show you who you are, what your life is all about, and everything that God intended for you, everything he intended for you to be, everything he intended for you to become and attain according to his promises. God's word is good. Get in it. Do the 15-minute challenge. Be consistent each and every day. Consistent. And then it's going to grow to where you're going to have your hour of power. And it's not going to be 15 minutes anymore. But if you're in chair two, start with the 15 minute challenge. So as we wrap up today, I want to ask you, and maybe you've already been thinking about this, what chair are you in? Yeah. Right? I'm not going to tell you what chair you're in, but if you are honest with yourself and you are listening to the Holy Spirit as he has his arm around you right now, between the two of you, you can know for sure what chair you're really in. And my prayer is that he would show you very, very clearly that you would know it and whatever chair you're in, you know, I want to encourage you to move to the next step. If you're in this chair over here, you've just come off the street, you're in a seat, you're like, these people are crazy, but I kind of like it. <laughs> We've prepared a table for you today. We have prepared this big, beautiful banquet for you to sit down at the table and experience who Jesus is, the bread of life, tasting and seeing that God is so, so good for you. I would encourage you today to climb over into this high chair, be born again, receive Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. You can do that by saying, God, I know that I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I know that, that in, on my best day, I fall short of the glory of God and I need Jesus in my life. It's only through Him that my sins can be washed away by the cleansing of the blood of the Lamb. I know that I need Jesus and He's the only way. Confessing Jesus Christ as Lord of your life and letting Him sit on the throne of your heart. When you do that, you become born again. You become adopted into the family of God and you've secured your place in heaven, your forever home in eternity. I can't urge you enough if you've not made this decision of, of having a real and life-changing relationship with Jesus that's contagious. If you haven't done that, do that today. What on earth could possibly get in the way of you making that decision? The best decision you could ever make. And if you are in this chair today already, and you're that babe in Christ, or maybe you've been in this chair a little too long, and you're getting really fat on the milk, and it's time to move up, I, I encourage you, climb over to chair number three today. Decide for yourself that you're, you're gonna grow daily in the word of God, in worship, and in prayer. Commit that you're gonna connect with other God-fearing believers each and every week. Do that by serving or, or by joining a life group. Commit today that you're going to finally trust God with all your heart and say, God, I'm gonna return the tithe to you because I trust you. It's a relationship thing. It's not a money thing. It's a heart thing. It's, it's a God. I, I, I know that all of this is yours and I'm going to show you through my tithe in my relationship with you that I love you and I trust you with my whole life, with my provision, my protection, my family, my finances. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. That's the sure sign of a chair three believer. They trust God. It's also joining the serve team, like I said, joining that tribe, finding your protection in that tribe, but using the gifts and the talents and the abilities that God has given you to help make Jesus famous, right? It's being contagious and sharing your faith, inviting people again from the street to the seat and the cycle begins all over again. If you're in chair three, sometimes, you know, when you're that mature believer, sometimes you gotta eat quick right? When there's a big meal, when there's a big banquet, you got to eat quick and then you got to get up and what? Get to work because there's others that need to come and sit down and eat. There's dishes that need to be done. There's, there's doors that need to be open. There's a parking lot that needs to be swept, whatever it is, you know, whatever it is, there's work to be done. And so I want to encourage you, whatever chair you're in, 
move to the next stage, the next level of development, the next level of maturity. If you would bow your heads today, I want to pray with you. Father God, I'm so grateful, Lord, for your word today. So grateful for every person sitting in this room under the sound of my voice and for those that are joining us as our online family at our online campus. So very grateful, God, that you have prepared a feast before us today, God, to hear your word. I pray, Lord, that you would show each and every one of us the chair that we are sitting in. Help us all, God, to move from the milk to the meat. Help us to, while we're doing it, God, to be alert and to be patient, to be consistent, to recognize that you have so much for us, God, as fully devoted followers of the faith. I pray, God, that you would move us as a church, move us as a church, God, into that chair three position so that we can make more room, God, for more people to come from the street to the seat and to sit down and taste and see how good you really are. With heads bowed and eyes closed today, I want to ask you a question. When I was going around these chairs, were, did you see yourself as chair one? And if you did, are you ready for your life to change, to never be the same again, for everything to change? This is your moment. This is your time. This is, this is where you say yes to Jesus and yes to life change. If you're watching online, I want you to comment in the comment section below, all in. And if you're in this room, we're going to pray a prayer together. But before we do, I want to know who we're praying with today. So if that's you and you say, I want to go from chair one today, who is someone who does not know God in a real relationship. I want to become born again, a new believer in Christ. I want to make heaven my home. If that's you, would you raise your hand today? And we're going to pray with you as a church family. Thank you. I see two hands. Amen. Who else this morning? Thank you. I see your hand. I see your hands up in the bleachers. Anybody else today? You say, I want to know Jesus in a real and life-changing way. Thank you. I see your hand. Thank you. Well, let's pray this prayer together, church, in, in, in this, uh, this, this coming alongside of those making this life-changing decision. Father, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse my heart. Jesus is the Son of God. It's only through Him I can be saved. I confess Him to be Lord of my life today. I place Him on the throne of my heart. Help me to live for you, God. Help me to go from being a baby to a fully devoted believer. Help me to be strong in the Lord. Help me to resist the enemy as he flees from me. I love you today, God, and I thank you in Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. 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 If you just prayed Praise that God. prayer, that Praise is by God. far the best decision you'll ever make in your life. Church, will you put your hands together? Celebrate all of those Woo. right now. Praise just God. Prayed Four that or five prayer. people gave their lives to Christ today. So wonderful. Hey, if, I want to just encourage you, if you were one of them today who made that decision to go from chair one to chair two, will you text Life Change? Text Life Change to 844-MMC-NEXT. This is going to give you a very, very practical, short message from Brad and I on what do I do now? We don't want to see you get picked off, okay? We want to help you get strong fast. So text Life Change to 844-MMC-NEXT. As you're exiting today, there's a gift in between the double doors. It's called a next step kit. Grab one of those as you leave. And if you're a part of the online family, do the same thing and just direct messages your address and we will mail you that gift in the morning. Well, we love you guys. We hope to see you back out here to get connected and start growing with the midweek. That's Wednesday at 630. We'll see you all then. Love you guys. Have a great God bless. day. Have a great week.